huge commitment uh, you've shown over the last number of years. Very, very difficult times for people in organisations, uh, particularly organisations providing key services to unemployed people. You don't need me to tell you what that's been like in terms of struggling with reduced resources and with the hugely increased demands that are being made uh, on all of the services that you provide and all of the work that you do. And people involved in advocacy and the difficulties, the difficulties that we all know exist in terms of trying to get your voice heard, trying to make those what are really logical um, suggestions, ideas, proposals, to make things a little better for people, and sometimes in very small ways, but actually being able to have that heard by policy makers, by decision makers, is very, very difficult. And I want to acknowledge the work that you all do in that regard as well. So I just want to say thank you to all of you for all of the work that you do on behalf of unemployed people. And maybe if you just indulge me now for a couple of moments, I'll talk a little bit about the work that the INOU has been doing over the last year. Yeah, yeah, work is fantastic. So welcome everybody. We do appreciate you all coming, delegates and observers. Just want a brief moment to thank the Standing Orders Committee, very important group. So thank you, Frank, and thank you, Paul, and also to give Elaine Harvey's uh, apologies for not being able to be with us uh, today. I really want to welcome the general branch and the individual membership strand of the organisation, a really key structure in the organisation, a core group of individuals, people with their daily lives are experiencing unemployment and everything that that means for people. We very much appreciate your involvement uh, and your active involvement in the work of the organisation. I also want to thank the Building Future Programme participants, and we talk a little bit about that, about that later on, uh, and to thank people for the wonderful displays uh, at the back of the room. And Sally will be coming up with Building Futures when I shut up to talk a little bit about uh, what all of that is about and what that means. But you're all very, very welcome. I know from all of you this will be your first. Um, annual conference of the organisation. So you're, you're very welcome. We do appreciate the work you've been doing and to congratulate everybody as well on your huge successes so far in that regard. Without the National Executive Committee, there wouldn't be an organisation. I just again want to thank my NEC colleagues for all of their own input uh, in the last uh, 12 months since the last conference. People give up their time voluntarily. Uh, they come along, unfortunately, there aren't any uh, attendance allowances uh, or any other types of payments that people receive. People very much do on a voluntary basis, often at their own personal expense or at the expense of their, their family, the time that they give to the organisation. So thanks to all uh, for that commitment and contribution. The ADC subcommittee, again, a very important subcommittee of the National Executive Committee. But we do the planning and preparation for the work of this conference here today. And I think just looking around uh, the room today, I mean, the huge numbers of people are in attendance, and all of the organisation that has gone into that. Most of that work has been done by staff in the organisation, but critically it's been kind of directed by and planned by the ADC uh, uh, subcommittee. So to thank the subcommittee members for their input there. The staff team, the directly employed staff and the CE participants in the organisation, absolutely critical role played by individuals. And Anne and Eric did unfortunately mention that uh, it's been a tough year uh, for staff in the organisation at so many different levels, given our financial situation. Um, and we've had to take very difficult steps to try and address the budget deficits. Um, so I just want to thank staff for the huge sacrifices that they have made. And just to reassure people as well of our commitment as a management of the organisation to reinstate and to restore people's pay as soon as that becomes reasonably possible. Um, CE project, 60 participants in the INOU and in outside external <coughs> organisations doing really valuable work. Without your help, again, the organisation wouldn't be able to function, so thank you for that. The theme of the conference today is decent jobs and the need for a supportive and not a punitive <coughs> employment service. And there'll be a round table discussion later on around that, so I'm not going to say too much around that at this stage. So what did we do? I'm just very quickly going to run through uh, some of these uh, items. So obviously we continue to deliver key services to support unemployed people. Welfare rights information and advocacy a key part of our work. And I know that many of you use our welfare rights information services. And we're really delighted that you do that. And we're glad to be able to assist. 
And we're also glad that you were able to assist us uh, through the work that you do. Working for Work, we're just about to produce the 21st edition of uh, this key publication for unemployed people and for people who work with unemployed people. So look out for that coming out soon. Redundancy information and the work that we do there. Thankfully, the number of redundancies that we've linked in with since in the last year has reduced from previous years. So we linked in with around 34 companies. I suppose on the plus side, we linked in with over 59 companies that announced jobs, which is fantastic. So we contact those organisations to make the case for them to look at the live register, to look at unemployed people as a potential source of recruitment for those positions and to promote the employer incentives to recruit unemployed people. And hopefully that's you know, producing a dividend uh, uh, for people. Not all of the jobs that are announced are filled immediately. Some of them are over one year, two years, three years, five years, okay? Uh, and we're trying to track that as well to see do these jobs actually really come on stream? But we're linking in with those companies and we're making the case for companies to look at the live register as a source of recruitment. We updated our website, imou.ie, and we attended well over 20 information events, job fairs. We've met with thousands and thousands of unemployed people, and I really would like to thank our welfare rights information staff who attend these events on a regular basis. And particularly, I'd like to thank Edel Kelly, who dealt us phenomenal work with us uh, at these events, uh, meeting with unemployed people, giving information, guiding people. Thank you, Edel, for the work that you do. range, I suppose, of training services. We developed Building Futures. We had a lovely graduation ceremony on the 14th of March for the people on the third year. The fourth year, the work is almost complete. I, I congratulate the people on that. Fantastic and well done. And work is underway as well at recruiting to the next year of the programme. It's been fantastic as well. It's been mainstream now as, a, as an open training initiative. We're delighted with that. Unfortunately, there was, uh, Eric mentioned, the Bank Street Trust funding, which is so critical in setting up this initiative, has unfortunately now come to an end. But we've been able, I think, to succeed in making the case to have it mainstreamed as an LTI, to get the resources uh, into the organisation that allows us to continue this really important programme. This is a programme that has directly aimed at people who are long-term unemployed, and the outcomes that people have achieved have been fantastic. And okay, it's partly because of some of what we do, but it also comes from within the people themselves. And it goes back to what John Douglas said earlier. The vast majority of people in this country desperately want to work. It's opportunities that are in short supply, not a desire to get off the live register. So congratulations to everybody in that regard. And to thank the Mount Street Trust fully for the huge amount of providing assistance and support, and particularly financial support, that we got over the last number of years. We have a record number of affiliated organisations, or 210 now. We've had significant linkages with uh, our affiliates and non-affiliated organisations around the country. We had three regional discussion forum meetings uh, between uh, last year and this year. Met with 58 people attended those. That's been that's fantastic. We have an e-bulletin. I would hope that most of you now have uh, signed up to receive our e-bulletin. We produce that on average now every six weeks. Uh, well done to everybody involved in that, particularly to Joe and to Paul, and also to Breed, who's Breed uh, at the back there, for the huge amount of input that Breed ourselves makes in that publication. Uh, without your input, Breed, it just wouldn't happen. So thank you for that. Over 3,200 uh, um, people on the circulation list for that publication. It's all done electronically. If you happen to, or if you don't receive it, let us know, we'd be glad to put you on the list. We're running as well a CE research project. Um, that's getting underway. We've already sent a questionnaire out to uh, our affiliated organisations that are uh, CE uh, sponsors. And we're hoping that we would encourage people to fill out that questionnaire and we will be linking back in with them in relation to identifying what really works for organisations in terms of good practice around helping people to move through community employment and into employment. And we want to hear back from people around that. We've also got another key project that's been running over the last uh, year or so and more indeed, which is the intro focus group meetings, where we meet directly with unemployed people and talk to them about their experience of using the Department of Social Protection's new intro service. 
um, tax huge into unemployed people in Sligo and also unemployed people here in Dublin that we've met with who use the, uh, the King's Inn, uh, Parnell Street intro office and also thanks to the individual members who have come along to those unemployed focus group meetings. We really do appreciate your input into that. We're pulling all of that information together uh, and we will be making that available uh, in the period ahead. We're just about as well to enter, hopefully this next phase of this will be starting to meet with people who are longer term unemployed at different social welfare offices. So I'll be talking further about that hopefully next year when we're all back uh, at this event then. We're hosting as well again this year the Springboard uh, Guidance Helpline. This is on behalf of the Higher Education Authority. Just to let you know that that actually goes live on the 9th of June. We're hosting that in Araby House. We're delighted to do that. It's a really good initiative uh, and a really good resource in terms of the helpline that's available for unemployed people wishing to access uh, education uh, uh, pro programs delivered through Springboard. Uh, we've also been working on a strategic plan uh, for the last number of months. Uh, and shortly, we'll be contacting our affiliated organisations by way of getting some feedback from yourselves around different elements of the plan. So all of that work is ongoing, and I want to take this opportunity to thank Carmel Dublin, uh, Carmel Dublin, Dublin from the WRC, the Social Economic Consultants. Carmel have been working with us to help us formulate the plan, and just to know, I suppose, our formal thanks to Carmel uh, for that. Key <coughs> statistics, some of them very, very recent. The life register I mentioned at the beginning, unemployment is beginning to fall. Uh, that's fantastic. More people come back to work. Great. Uh, what could be wrong with that? Uh, Long-term unemployment falling. Fantastic. What could be wrong with that? Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with people going back to work. I mean, that's something that we absolutely positively welcome, of course. But unfortunately, it's the pace at which people are going back to work. It's not really quickly enough. There simply are still the number of jobs we created to make a serious dent in the life register. And people who are unemployed are struggling to get many of those jobs. People who are long-term unemployed are really struggling to get those jobs. There's a huge challenge here to link uh, people into work and those work opportunities that are available. And some of those work opportunities are at a level that many unemployed people will struggle to compete for without very significant opportunities to restrain and reskill. So yeah. Unemployment is falling. Lots of people have emigrated, of course. We know that our families, all our families have been affected by this. And many people don't make the transition from the um, job seekers benefit payment to the means tested job seekers allowance. So, you know, statistics aren't necessarily always what they seem initially. But there are more people at work. I think that's really important. And we really want to see that develop and grow and continue in the year ahead. Just an overview in terms of some of the uh, other work that we've been dealing with at a policy level. Department of Social Protection, Department of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation, Department of Education and Skills, all have large overarching uh, initiatives and programs, pathways to work. Significant, unfortunately, uh, focus on fraud and control, and sometimes that's in the driving seat we feel, rather than a supportive service. And that's partly the theme of the conference today, and we'll be talking about that at the round table, the need for a supportive employment service, and not a punitive one, not the big stick. I don't think people need that. They definitely don't need it. They need jobs. Uh, and employment programs, still a key part of the Department of Social Protection's uh, work. And I very much hear the point as well that John Douglas made about programs and about activation. I absolutely agree with John. Unemployed people don't need to be activated. Unemployed people need to be supported. They're doing everything they can to get back to work. So activation, it has to be positive, it has to be supportive, and it has to deliver for people, and that's absolutely critical. The action plan for jobs, a huge number of actions in that, many hundreds, Difficult to point to one to say, well, that made a difference. In their totality, you have a sense that maybe, perhaps, there is certain scope for things to change. And we're beginning, hopefully, to see some of that in terms of some of the job creation. And the Department of Education and Skills, again, local VECs come together, brought together now education and training boards. SOLIS has now been created. So again, these new structures, new entities are emerging. There's a lot of bending down to be done there. But again, that work is ongoing. Uh, we've been able to give our input in terms of what needs to be done, 
how they need to be developed to best support and employ people to be able to access whatever services uh, that are being delivered and for those services to be improved. So they're setting down, they're in place, but again they have a huge challenge to start to really now deliver for unemployed people and particularly to meet unemployed people's aspirations of getting good quality training, getting good quality education opportunities. Pathways to work, a 50 point plan for tackling unemployment, I won't list all the 50 points. Okay. Uh, youth guarantee, great in principle, a good idea. Uh, it doesn't guarantee the young person a job and that's what the young person needs. So, okay, it guarantees maybe programs, courses. Uh, they've got to be quality. They've got to work for people. But at the end of the day, it's about work. And people have to be able to see that there's a link between whatever program or course they do and an employment outcome. And that's what we're trying to <coughs> Job path, I mentioned it earlier. First time in the history of the state, I suppose, that this particular type of model is being used. Contracting out services, long-term unemployed people, private providers, uh, placing in work. Um, yeah, at the moment, just as we speak this morning, a number of organisations are making presentations to the Department of Social Protection, some of the organisations that apply to bid to do this work. It'll be interesting to see uh, who gets those contracts in the end. Again, from our perspective, we've met with an awful lot of these organisations that are looking to do this work. We will be very concerned to ensure that organisations that have the right ethos and approach get these contracts. Organisations that really want to work with unemployed people and support unemployed people and not organisations that want to make a quick buck. They're not the type of organisations I think we need running this absolutely key, core and vital service. Action plan for jobs, these are linked, I suppose, to the uh, the overall kind of scheme of things. The rollout of the local enterprise offices, and many of you at local level will be aware of that. And I know some concerns around uh, elements, vital and aspects uh, of that as well, in terms of how that's going to work on the ground, uh, and who has responsibility, and where should unemployed people with a business idea, you know, where, what should be the first port of call? It's not an ideal situation at the moment in some respects. So there's work to be done, I think, around that as well. And I mentioned SOLAS and the education and training boards and everything that's been happening there. The Labour Market Council was set up by government. The ILU is the only C and V organisation represented on the council, very ably by Reed O'Brien. Uh, the fantastic opportunity to bring to the, I suppose, to the core of and heart of policy making issues affecting unemployed people. So we see that as being useful in terms of our involvement on that. What does it do? It monitors the implementation of pathways to work. It identifies key issues and potential responses. And it provides input and feedback on a number of different elements. So strategies to increase uh, employer and job seeker awareness of you know, the various different initiatives. The youth guarantee, the job contract model, and also wider policy issues relevant to the, uh, to the labour market and to development. There. It's an important council and I think it's right that the IMOU is involved in that. The action plan for jobs, talk a little bit about that. The key theme is uh, communication and maximising the impact through effective communication. And there's a new, I'll just flip down, there's a new DES, DSP, Skills to Work website. And I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at that website. Uh, we'll be making some constructive comments and feedbacks back to the relevant departments in relation to that. I, I think there's an opportunity to have a really good website to help people to understand the range of initiatives and options that are available uh, for them. I'm not sure that Skills for Work is doing that uh, at the moment in terms of how it's currently configured. So again, I think there's an opportunity there for the IMU to raise issues uh, and, and to, uh, to have those uh, uh, made, made available to the relevant departments that are overseeing this. Unfortunately, in the action plan for jobs, there are no actions on unemployed people as entrepreneurs. And we know that a significant number of people who are unemployed have responded to their own unemployment through looking to set up their own businesses, whether it be a self-employed basis, or through entrepreneurial activity. And I think that, again, is uh, uh, that's missing, uh, unfortunately, from the, uh, from the plan. Talk a little bit about further education and training. Just going to skip through this. Uh, strategic review, obviously, of further ed and training. Um, it's about the prioritisation of people who are long term unemployed. People would welcome that. Uh, but again, it's how that's going to be done to extend it. This is going to be appropriately resourced uh, and so on. We saw that the VECs, I mentioned that in terms of their now ETBs, all of that is, is in place, but begging down. And the further education and training strategy has recently been published as well. And 
uh, but, you know, invite people to look at that uh, and, and to read that who have an interest in uh, further education and training in terms of what's proposed under that particular strategy document. document. It is really important and will affect thousands upon thousands of people over the next number of years. Okay, so I suppose getting to the end of all of this, what are the challenges? The live register has continued to fall, but as I said, it's not always for positive reasons, and emigration is one of those, but there are others as well. Job seekers benefit not making the transition to job seekers allowance. It's really important that unemployed people be matched up with the best education, training, and critically employment options available to them. And that's been a core argument that we have now been pursuing for the last four, five, six years. Without adequate resources, however, how can the large scale changes that are underway at the moment really deliver for unemployed people? Because you do get a sense that a lot of the, this has been done within existing resources and there aren't any additional resources being made available, or at least not at the level that's needed to really begin to make a serious inroad into the scale of the crisis and ongoing challenge that we face. Given the focus on the live register, and this is important as well, how will the general issue of joblessness be addressed? We know that there are many, many people not in the live register who are very much unemployed, okay, uh, and are desperately anxious to get back to work. We know there are a lot of people who didn't make the transition from job seekers benefit to job seekers allowance. They're not getting any payment. They're not getting access to any program uh, that will help them to, you know, take the first steps back to work. That can't be right. You know, these issues have to be addressed in the context of a modern and sophisticated uh, employment. Uh, and entitlements uh, service. And finally, obviously, the issue of job creation. And we need to see job creation at a much greater scale and also a much greater regional and occupational spread of jobs. We were at a focus group, or a, 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 yeah, it was a focus group uh, meeting uh, there recently in, uh, in Sligo Discussion Forum meeting, I beg your pardon. Um, and uh, we were talking about job creation and quite rightly some of the people at that uh, discussion forum meeting said well hold on a second guys you know what universe are you living in because you know we're just simply not seeing job creation here the only jobs that are available are either program jobs or their internships and, and John Doug has made a, a point in relation to that as well not all parts of the country, in fact very few parts of the country are seeing the reality of job creation it's happening in some places particularly the larger urban uh, areas, but there are particular types of jobs as well. So it's not wide scale. We need to see that now kind of spread uh, across the country. So it brings us back, as opposed to where we started. The theme of this conference is about decent work, but what do we mean by that? It's about work that gives people back their dignity, and that's really important, and the need for a supportive employment service. So I'm really looking forward now to the roundtable discussions, to getting input from people in terms of your own perceptions around these very important issues and aspects uh, for the organisation. And I'd just like to finish again by thanking everybody for coming along this morning. Uh, really appreciate your being here. And again, to thank you all for your work in support of unemployed people and working with people to assist them to move from their current situation back to a situation where people have a reasonable hope 